I'm going to start this story off by introducing the characters. My name is Festus, your narrator. And we have Lady Kay. She's the Beard's Affection, or the Wonderful Milady. <laughs> then there's Andrew, also known as College Beard or Mr. Dorito. He's extremely arrogant, as well as obese, by British standards at least, and an all-around white knight neckbeard. New to our cast is Rocky. He's the boxing instructor. He's built like a tank, and he takes no crap from anyone. Roxanne, the female boxing instructor. She's attractive, but you really don't want to mess with her, as she will knock you out if you try anything dumb. So, on to the story. This takes place around May or June, just before our summer holiday. Lady K and I were very happy, doing very well in our classes, working out together frequently, and nerding it up after hours. But there was one fat, dark, nasty cloud hanging above us, preparing to rain down beat us raindrops of dew, and then make us mad a bit more. To understand the level of creep you're about to hear, you need to know what we look like. So without any hesitation, I will describe our glorious visages to all of you. Lady K is tall at 5'11". She is taller than your average guy with fairly long hair that tumbles down her shoulders like Mr. Wonka's chocolate waterfall. She is slender and athletic and a perfect face as far as I'm concerned. Her eyes are hazelnut brown too. I am tall, 6'3", and 190 pounds. My hair is kept fairly short and black as pitch. I've got blue eyes, clean shaven, and we're both white as Andrew is short, about 5 foot 7, and huge, according to my opinion, at 220 pounds. His gross beard is literally like the one that you refuse to shave off when you're an edgy 14 year old because you thought it made you look older, but it's all over his face. He has horrible acne from all the crap that he eats. His hair is very greasy and unkempt. Any shirts that he wears will become plastered to his huge gut by the sweat that always drips from every orifice and will become covered with food and strange off-white stains within a few hours. But he will wear each one for days on end. He stinks, never showers, and he has the attitude to match his appearance. The reason why I'm telling you this is that one day, Andrew's bag ripped as he was coming out of the lecture hall. What spilled out was a lot of paper, like a whole pack of printer paper, and each one had a full color drawing. Andrew ran like a cowed dog, and being the kind citizens we are, we stopped to pick up the papers. Closer to the drawing, it was easier to make them out. I gathered most of them and took Lady K to my room, where it was easier to make them out. I'll give Andrew credit. He's a talented artist, but his drawings disgusted me. There were several of me lying on the floor, blood spreading from whichever part Andrew chose, but mostly my privates. Speaking of spreading, many drawings depicted, quite clearly, Lady K in various states of undress, showing off to an unseen observer. Andrew had taken the liberty of giving her the most unrealistic <coughs> features I've ever seen, as well as adding 20 pounds to her weight because of it. Still, other drawings were of him. He had taken off 20 pounds of fat from his body and added 30 pounds of muscle. Even more drawings showing all three of us in full Technicolor, with him and Lady K usually naked, sometimes doing couple stuff, and almost always stabbing me in the chest or in the privates. Scattered among the drawings were some reference printouts of some photos of Lady K laughing, smiling, and even singing one time. Some from Facebook, and some from who knows where, and there was reference pictures of female genitalia, which quite obviously had been used multiple times. Even some wounds, like stab wounds, slash wounds, blunt force trauma wounds, all of these from a website like Real Gore, or whatever. I can't remember the site, and I'm not googling to find that crap. Lady K took it better than I did. She just sat there with a hundred mile stare, looking slightly shell-shocked by what we had witnessed. To this day, we discuss why he carried them around with him, and why he even drew them in the first place. I guess he was fantasizing? More than likely. We needed to blow off some steam, 
So we went to the sports center and did one of those drop-in sessions where you can just go and box and then leave as long as you have a membership. Warming up, I see someone else has the same idea as we had. You guessed it, it was Andrew. Boxing drills were fun. Push-ups, pull-ups, dips, squats, skipping, sit-ups and calf raises. What was the most fun was blasting through the required 25 as fast as possible so we could watch Andrew for some comic relief. The noises he made while he was doing it were the best. It sounded like each rep was a hot Brazilian model, bringing him closer and closer to climax with each one. Needless to say, Andrew finished last. He flopped over as soon as he was done with the exercises, and he got slowly up, like he just ran a marathon. Rocky split the groups up into guys, and a surprising number of girls. He then asked us to get into pairs. This, to have some free sparring practice, before the three minute bouts at the end. Before I could look desperately about, for any guy to pair with, who wasn't Andrew. He yelped out, I wanna spar fastest! I froze as a neckbeard's vision is based on movement. And in that time, he thrust into my hands a pair of boxing gloves. I didn't want to do this. Not with Andrew, who harbored murderous fantasies about me. But everyone else had been claimed. So I set about dodging all the slow punches he threw. And slowly listened to my boxing partners, furious. You're a real that you're not fighting back. You can't take a punch like a girl. You're such an who abuses women. About 10 minutes later, Rocky called us all into the center, where a boxing ring-sized square was painted on the floor, and said that we can challenge whoever we wanted, only if we were the same sex and in the same weight category. Unfortunately, under 90 pounds and 220 are close enough that Andrew was allowed to challenge me. In front of the whole group, he said, Winners earn the right to Lady K! and has to do whatever the other guy wants. I looked over at Lady K, and she just nodded once. So I simply replied, You're on! I pulled on my gloves, and I put in my mouth guard, waiting for the sign to go. I wasn't gonna hold back. This bitch was mine. At last, for three minutes. Now, if any of you have ever tried to fight a fat person, you'll know the best tactic is to outlast them in stamina. But, only had three precious minutes. And Andrew may forfeit if he gets too tired. As soon as the bell sounded, I lunged forward, connecting with Andrew's nose, making him reel. He tried to cover his face with his gloves, so I sank several body blows into his enormous stomach, causing his elbows to drop, allowing me an opening to his face. A few strong jabs later, and Andrew was backing off into the corner of the square. His wide nose flattened, and a disturbing mixture of blood and snot was running down his face. I closed the gap, and Andrew warded me off with a couple of easily dodged punches, which left him open on his left side. So I took full advantage, keeping him at arm's length, and hitting him in the side of his face a few times. This continued for about a minute by which time Andrew was getting desperate. Now blows to the balls are not allowed in boxing, and knees are not allowed either. But Andrew mixed them both, swinging his large, fat knees into my testicles, causing me to stumble back in pain. Rocky was talking to Roxanne, so he didn't notice this. In my pain-fueled rage, I hit him again, and again, and again in the nose. He went down with a huge thump. His nose was a bloody mess and my upper body was splattered with his blood. Rocky ended the session after that, and I told Andrew, As my prize for victory, I want you to leave us alone. It's just too bad that we never shook hands on it. Lady K and I went back to campus, and she ensured that no permanent damage had been done to my bits. To make absolutely sure everything was in full working order, ah, beautiful, rage-induced catharsis. The blood. Oh, it sings to me. It was in my opinion, completely deserved by him, as his actions leading up to this point probably broke the Geneva Convention. He started it, but at the risk of sounding cliche, I finished it. Never fret, neckbeard followers. More tales to come, as we still have a whole half of a year with Andrew before legal action was taken. To start off this next story, let's introduce the new characters. Police Constable Jeff. He's the jerk police officer who buys everything Andrew sells. 
Police Constable James. He's actually a nice police officer, and he believes me. Police Constable Sophia. Mean police woman. She doesn't believe me or Lady K. Raj, the crappy public defender. He's a police officer's b Does whatever they say to him. Nearly got me taken to court. Now, this story occurs after a long summer holiday between years at university. Lady K and I decided to rent a tiny little flat and live together near campus, partially to get away from Andrew and partly because we wanted to live together. We were still working out and loving life. We still were getting top grades and finishing all of our work. One time, as we were leaving campus, we got into an argument about something tiny and stupid, which ended up with us kind of yelling at each other in public. While we were still angry, we went home. That evening, after calming down, we had a very enjoyable makeup session, after which Lady K went to take a shower. Disaster struck when she got out of the shower, as she slipped over and hit her face and her arm on the radiator, hard. There was blood on the radiator from the cut above her eyebrow, and she kept cradling her arm. Nothing seemed broken or concussed, so she just took painkillers and went to sleep. In the morning, we slept through both alarms, meaning that Lady K, she didn't have time to cover up her black eye or the bruise on her arm with makeup. She had planned to do that. We rushed to campus, arriving just two minutes late for the lecture, and we thought nothing more of it. I remember the amount of filthy looks I got due to everyone assuming that I had given her a black eye and a cut. I was way too dense to think of the reason, but Lady K responded to the looks by smiling and snuggling her head into my neck or shoulder, which turned away most of the murderous glares. Not all, however, as a certain white knight noticed her injuries and that they were... Finally, I got the proof of his woman beating ways. I'm gonna call the police on him and get him out of my way. And Andrew did. He called the police on me after the day was over. Let me set the scene. It's early on a Saturday morning when there's a hammering on the door. Waking up is never nice and is especially bad at 5.30 a.m. Another knock at the door. I got out of bed. As the sun peeked into the sky, I walked groggily over to the front door, only dressed in my underwear. Now, a nearly naked six foot three guy might be quite intimidating, but nowhere near as intimidating as opening the door to three police officers in stab proof vest, holding batons and yelling at me to get on the ground. In complete panic, I fell to the ground and I had a very large male police officer jump onto my back and cuff me far more tightly than what was necessary. The other two ran into the flat, finding Lady K asleep in the bed, and they shouted at her to put her hands where the officers could see them. One stayed with her while the other searched the house for evidence, quickly finding the radiator in the bathroom, which I did not yet clean. Photos were taken, as well as blood samples for evidence. Before I was read my rights, I was made to get into some clothes and taken to the local police station. At this point, I was still confused about what I supposed to have done and to whom I've done it. Upon arrival at the station, they put me in a tiny cell with a toilet and a mattress and served the smallest bowl of cornflakes I've ever seen, as well as a cold cup of coffee. I was never called by name, as they always referred to me as Ugh, you piece of sh Or Cad especially by the female police officers. At 8 a.m., they took me into the interview room without legal representation and tried to get me to talk. I may be slow, but I know that I can't say anything, as a good lawyer could twist whatever I said and make it into being a confession. Only said two things. Where's my representation? And no comment. I've gotten about three hours worth of sleep. I was aching all over from the arrest, and I was panicking. Because if I went to court, I would have a permanent criminal record, and I'd never be able to get a job. Eventually, nearly after an hour of examination, they called off the session, and my representation arrived. He seemed overly chummy with the police officers, and kept giving Police Constable Sophia no eyes. Despite the fact that he was short, ugly, and fat, and she was tall and quite pretty. He never contested what the officer said and constantly undermined me by making me second guess myself. Eventually, I dismissed him and handled my own life. They showed me pictures of the bloody radiator and I told them truthfully what happened and said that Lady K would back up my story before getting shouted at by Police Constable Sophia saying that 
How dare you refer to the victim by name, you disgusting filth. I told them that she was the only person there at the time of the accident, and if they wanted to have just process, that they were obligated to take her statement. Police Constable James had got me a decent cup of tea, and he's been nice to me, whereas Police Constable Jeff and Sophia had been verbally abusive, dismissive of everything I said to prove my innocence, and had denied me a shower when I asked for one. When they took statements from Lady K and some witnesses to our argument, Police Constable Jeff, he came around. But Sophia, she was still treating me like a piece of trash, as she thought that I had beaten my girlfriend, who was... She's only covering for you out of love. That's usually how it is in an abusive relationship. They interviewed me, cross-examined me, many, many times. But I either retold my version of events, or refused to comment. By 6pm, they heard back from the Crown Prosecution Service, a uh, British thing, which tells the police whether they have a case against me or not. And there was no case against me, and they had to let me go. Over the course of 12 and a half hours, Sophia had accidentally trapped my hand in the door, held a hot cup of coffee against my hand when I was cuffed to the table, and led a campaign of verbal abuse against me. Complaints were filed against her and Police Constable Jeff to their over-enthusiastic approach to my arrest and my treatment in custody. I got a word about 250 pounds in compensation. Lady K was waiting in reception, and she made a big show of throwing herself at me as soon as she was able, in full view of all the officers. We left, and we got back to our flat, where I found that my phone had over 1,300 missed messages, mostly from my so-called friends, about how I was a piece of for beating women. It took Lady K weeks to tell them all that no, he has never hit me maliciously, not even once. You should apologize to him for treating him like trash. He's devastated. Around a month later, most of them had apologized. That month, where everyone rejected me and thought that I was a human piece of garbage, I really considered suicide. If it wasn't for Lady K's support, I probably wouldn't be here today. Andrew texted me every day, telling me... You piece of trash. You should just die. I saved every one of those texts in my screenshot library so that I would have future proof. I lost about 20 pounds over the course of that month and I generally felt like crap. But I quickly regained my weight and happiness after everyone stopped wishing me dead. I wish I was joking. Still to come, the incident, legal action, and the end. This is it guys, the final conclusion to the saga of Andrew, and what a wild ride it has been. We've had cringe, tantrums, creepy everything, stalking, arrest, violence, and all roads have led to this. Today, we reclaim our freedom! As always, we'll start with the cast, Festus, me, your narrator, Lady K, the object of the beard's affection, Andrew, or Mr. Dorito, which is the college beard. Mr. A makes his return, huge guy, very kind. Plus he had important evidence, which was needed for the reporting. Mrs. HR, head of the university HR department, very nice woman, but deals with a lot of students' crap. She can be a little impatient. This final stanza, the 21 gun salute, to send off our tail begins as they all should in bed where you are warm and safe and loved. Lady K and I, we laid there a while on a cold Saturday morning, sometimes not saying a word for hours. This cold Saturday morning, however, we were discussing what needed to be done about Andrew. We had kept the evidence of what he had done, some of the revolting pictures, a photo of the vibrator, screenshots of the more interesting text, Lady K's door from her old room after Andrew tried to break in, and the video of his verbal abuse at the party, omitting the slap, with a comprehensive portfolio of evidence against the beard. We decided to just do it to go for the gold and report his arse. That is how we found ourselves in the HR department on Monday morning with a bag full of evidence. The department was very helpful. They looked over all the evidence that we collected and saw the effects that it had on us. They handled everything professionally and they decided that we should go to the police to press charges of harassment and stalking. Meanwhile, Andrew has changed tactics. 
trying to steal from my girl, to trying to get me out of the way so that he could move in and pick up the pieces. A series of elaborate traps were set for me, from the old banana pill slipperoo, to the classic trip lines in front of the doorway, to slightly more dangerous. With the electronics that I handled every day in the physics lab being dangerously tampered with, I documented everything I found, and I fixed all that I could. Also the epidemic of him trying to trip and slip me, even at the physics department. But I never fell. Eventually, the police decided that we had a case against Andrew, so they brought him in to question him. After a while, we got a restraining order. Andrew wasn't allowed to come within 300 feet of us, meaning that he couldn't continue doing physics at the current university. He wasn't allowed to contact us, and he had to pay us about 1,000 pounds each for the damages. His mom paid. Epilogue. After Andrew had the restraining order, both Lady K and I achieved first class degrees. We went on to achieve master degrees too. We currently live together and are engaged at the moment. We work in a research laboratory, learning from great physicists while we test stuff. It's a lot of fun. I love the job what I do. I am currently doing a part-time PhD based on mechanical physics, which takes a lot of time and effort, but it will be worth it. In fact, we have a new neckbeard. I will call him Sir Ham, a computer technician in our lab who records all of our data. So stay tuned for that, dear friends, to be continued. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you guys enjoyed the conclusion of College Beard. I will probably make a full compilation later. Thank you very much to Festus Maximus for putting up with the beard and for supplying us such entertaining stories. And this time, I'd love to give a special thanks to Tegan Amelia. I hope I said that right. As most of you guys already know, I do mispronounce things from time to time. Sometimes more than once, but I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Thank you very much again for joining me, and until next time, make sure to have fun with your failures, or they'll have fun with you. <laughs>